This is a lecture on climate change adaptation and a simple example of uh, strategic game theory that I think will be uh, useful for folks. And you're going to quickly see the themes of benevolent paternalism versus tough love and how, depending on what strategy the government plays, how this affects where different people choose to live. And then we're going to see mother nature at work. So sequential games. Uh, many of us as kids play chess or checkers. These are sequential games where uh, white moves first and then black moves and vice versa. Uh, rock, paper, scissors is not a sequential game. You play that game sequentially and uh, the guy who goes second will always win. We're about to play a different sequential game where here's going to be the timing of the game. First, I'm going to have government make a move. Then the population will make a move, where the population is going to be of two types in this caricature quick lecture. There's going to be the rational Vulcan, Mr. Spock from Star Trek. He, he, that's going to be one type of people. And then Homer Simpson from the, the lovable character from The Simpsons, Doe, is going to be the other character here. And he's sort of a caricature for behavioral economics. So Mr. Spock represents neoclassical University of Chicago man, while Homer Simpson is sort of a product of UC Berkeley. And then once people make their location decisions, then Mother Nature is going to make a decision on whether there's going to be a Hurricane Sandy or not. So let me describe the game. And this is a very simple game to make my point and to get out of this lecture. Government is going to move first. A, it's going to make one choice. It can raise taxes for the entire nation and use that revenue it collects to build a seawall around the coastal city. So think of New York City or Norfolk, Virginia. It, it can, that is the, the government-heavy solution. Or it can be libertarian and do nothing. They set taxes at zero and not build the seawall. It has to make this decision first. Once it makes this decision, uh, Spock and Homer Simpson must choose where to live. A, to keep, I want you to think that there's a large number of Spocks and Homers, millions of them, and they each know their own type. They have a, a, two choices, two locational choices. They can either live in the coastal city that faces natural disaster risks, this is like a Manhattan, or I'm assuming that there's a safe city, a higher ground city, which faces zero risk from Mother Nature and climate change. They make their locational choice. Both the Spocks and Homers each individually make their locational choice after seeing whether government has built the seawalls around the coastal city. Mother Nature then uh, randomizes. Mother Nature makes a decision of whether it inflicts a terrible storm or not. And this is a random variable. Uh, rising greenhouse gas emissions raise the probability that a terrible storm will hit the coastal city. So I make the assumption that the safe city has a zero probability of being hit with the storm, while the coastal city has a positive probability of being hit with a terrible storm, and that this probability is rising over time. Mother Nature, in the final stage of the game, makes a choice whether to hit the coastal city with one of these shocks or not. If the city has seawalls built by government, then the shock causes less damage than if the city... Uh, does not have seawalls. So that bottom bullet point is missing a knot. What's the equilibrium to this game? We're going to do two cases. In the first equilibrium, which I call the tough love equilibrium, government commits to not build the seawalls. Spock and Homer uh, see no seawalls. Spock recognizes that climate change is a serious significant threat and that there's no protection in the coastal city and he votes with his feet a la tibu to move to the safe city he forms accurate updated bayesian probability assessment of the new risk in contrast the homers are going to disproportionately live in the risky city because as behavioral agents they don't update their probabilities they blissfully assume that perhaps there's no risk of climate change impacting the coastal city, and the coastal city is, is pretty, and they locate there. In this case, if the storm does take place, the Spocks are safe on higher ground, while the Homers disproportionately suffer. This is a spatial separating equilibrium where the two types of people, Spock and Homer, make different choices such that the Homers 
are at greater risk from the natural disaster, which has a higher probability of occurring because of increased greenhouse gas emissions, raising the risk of climate change. And clearly this has environmental justice issues for the homers. The other equilibrium, and this is the benevolent paternalism equilibrium. The government does build the seawall, and this has a causal effect reducing the disaster risk for the homers who, who would have lived in the coastal city in the absence of the investment in seawalls. And it also benefits the SPOCs who, if there's a subset of SPOCs with a taste for coastal living, they are, they are happy that the government has built seawalls because that allows them to have the win-win of living in a pretty coastal area but being less at risk from the climate change and they perceive that risk. The third point is important. The pr production of the seawall creates a moral hazard effect that we can see through migration patterns. Some of the Spocks and Homers who would have located in the safe city in the absence of the seawalls now move to the risky coastal city and this is, this is a reduction in private self-protection of actually moving to the risky area because of government in in investment. And that's the definition of moral hazard. This moral hazard would be especially costly to society if the Spocks and Homers, and I recognize that the Homers would be more likely to do so, if the Homers overestimate the effectiveness of the, of the seawalls. As we learned with uh, Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, engineering solutions can fail. Uh, but this is a case where government subsidies, the safe city paying taxes, and that money going to build seawalls in the risky city, create this migration effect of attracting even the Spocks to move to the risky city and they would calculate their expected utility from both locations. So the benevolent paternalism equilibrium has unintended consequences. An idea from my book Climatopolis. I recognize that the tough love equilibrium may sound harsh but the free markets, free market capitalism actually incentivizes the Spocks who recognize that climate change is a real threat, to develop adaptation strategies for the homers. There's an entrepreneurial act opportunity here for forward-looking investors to come up with new strategies like floatable homes to help the homers ride out storms in the future. A philosophical question. If the homers insist on living in the coastal city, should they be using their own money to buy protection from storm risk such as floatable homes, or do they have the right to government subsidies to provide public goods such as seawalls? I think both labor, both urban economists and public finance economists would argue the third point. Since seawalls are local public goods for a city like New Orleans or New York City, local property taxes, not national taxes, should be used to finance them because most of the benefits from these seawalls go to the people who live there. Yet, in this economy, if the federal government is providing this infrastructure, that's implicitly using federal dollars to subsidize living in a risky area. And so I hope what you take away from this economy is the strategic logic and the interaction between government choices, individual choices, and Mother Nature.